All right, so we're live, Roger. You got to go pause your. Uh... I'm here. I'm waiting. All right, well, let's see here. Let's hit play. <sighs> Finally. Okay, mine is paused. All righty. Yeah. <laughs> I am paused. <laughs> So welcome, everybody, to be on the Grave Radio, where the dead educate the living. Here, we're live on YouTube. As your host, I am Christina Corsetti, and we are here tonight with Roger Belt. Roger? Hello, everybody. My partner in crime. All right, so we're all familiar with the case of Lizzie Borden. We're uh, formerly known as the Dirty Underwear Gang. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, folks. Um, she was an American woman who gained infamy after being tried and acquitted for the 1892 axe murders of her father and stepmother in Fall River, Massachusetts. Now, I find it quite interesting that her middle name is Andrew, don't you? Her name is Andrew. Lizzie Andrew Borden. Well, that's a middle name, though, see, so it really but doesn't matter. It's a little odd, but it doesn't matter. And there are actually guys named, I mean, girls named Andy. I just find that interesting. So, but yeah, back in them days, you wouldn't think so much that they would do that. <coughs> and she was not friendly to people and Oh, he was not friendly to people and took his business seriously. This is Mr. Borden. Yeah, I'm trying to get my page up here. Andrew was a board director of several banks and also worked in commercial real estate. Dude had to be freaking rolling in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He was a wealthy guy. Um. see here yeah well considering his wealth his home was very impressive and Lizzie wanted to move to a bigger beautiful home but he would have no part of it uh, I guess she wanted to get out of there I guess they had no electricity no bathroom um, the actual Lizzie Borden house is not that big no it's not and she wanted a bigger and better home but he didn't want to move he didn't want to give it to the girls. Um, most wealthy and unpopular men and many wanted to see Andrew Borden dead. I guess he was an evil man who did not provide for his daughters. Well, I mean, how can you say that? I mean, they, they had clothes on the back of the roof over their head, a place to sleep, didn't they? Yeah, that's true. They did. But I guess like between the meals that they ate and, and um, you know, having no, uh, modern things in the house. Um, that's what they say. They said he didn't provide much for his daughters. Well, maybe he didn't want modern things. That's true. You know, I mean, a lot of people, they can have money. That doesn't mean that they want to look like the richest kid on the block, you know? Yeah, that's true too. And not to mention when you think about it, uh, when tax time came around, you didn't want to look like the richest kid on the block. Yes. You know, they come in to do an estimate of your house, and it's full of old junk. They're not going to be uh, too much likely to audit you or something, you know? Yeah, that's true. He was a very smart businessman. Yes, indeed. Yeah. If incest or rapes was inflicted upon the daughters on a long-term basis, why was it that Abby was attacked and murdered first and received far more blows than Andrew? That's interesting. You got to wonder about that. Now, was she like the evil stepmother from, you know, the uh, Sleeping Beauty story or... Well, from what I understand, she knew that that was going on with Andrew and the daughters, and she may have even had a part in it. 
to be honest with you. I've got to. Um, well, Roz, Roger does his thing. Let's see here. Um, the way I look at it is, you know, from what I understand, there were some things going on with the daughters and the maid and um, things that are of a sexual nature. And from what I understand, um, the stepmother turned her eye towards it and allowed it to happen. Um, what if Andrew was going, was doing that to the daughters and help and Abby knew about it? What if he was doing it all for them? You can't discount, you know, at the time period, he could have been doing all four of them um, and kept it, you know, on a hush hush. Let's see here. Thank you very much for the coffee. Um, Mary said in chat, wasn't there a movie starring, I think, Elizabeth Montgomery as Lizzie? You know, actually, there were many movies. Um, actually, there's Chronicles, and Lizzie Borden had an axe, and Lizzie Borden herself. But from what I understand, it's Christina Ricci, who is Lizzie. Um, I'm not sure if Elizabeth Montgomery was, too. He, uh, she could have been. Okay, I'm back, y'all. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. We're just talking about Mary has said in chat that they made a movie and she wasn't sure if Elizabeth Montgomery was Lizzie. But I know that Christina Ricci was, so we were discussing that. Okay, I'm trying to follow up until I find you here. All right. No, we're at, um, you know, things you may not know about Lizzie Borden. Many people might have wanted to see Andrew Borden dead. Um, the gruesome murder shocked the community, but many in Fall River were perhaps not entirely surprised that Andrew Borden had met an untimely end. He was net worth of $10 million uh, in today's money. He was one of the wealthiest and most unpopular men in town. Frugal to a fault, he was a self-made man who had became the head of one town's largest bank and substantial property owner. The businessman had also made many enemies on his rise to the top, and rumors swirled that Andrew and Abby had perhaps been killed as revenge for Andrew's shady business dealings. Um, I don't. I mean, there's different stories about all that. Because I think she did it. And uh, I think she did it because. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, she wasn't allowed to marry somebody or something. Yeah, um, I actually have that down here a little farther. Um, but yeah, there's something going on with that too. Taste reveals some skeletons in the Borden family closet. Woo! My favorite <laughs> closet. The initial investigation focused outside of the immediate family and included local businessmen, neighbors, and even the family made of an Irish immigrant named Bridget Sullivan. Police soon realized that Andrew's daughter, Lizzie, had as much to gain as anyone by the death of her father. Andrew's tight-fistedness extended to his own family despite his wealth. The boarding home lacked even the most basic conveniences, including indoor plumbing. Now, look, I got to draw the line, okay? If, if I'm Lizzie and, and her sister and, and even her, her stepmother, look, dude, you got all this money, build me a freaking indoor toilet. But that's what I mean. I think it was a hole, wasn't it? Or bucket they had going. <laughs> it says uh, no indoor plumbing. Uh, if there was no indoor plumbing, then there wouldn't have been an indoor bathroom. That means they had to use an outhouse. Yeah, exactly. A hole in the ground. You know, when you're rolling in the dough, you don't use an outhouse. Not in that day and time. They could have had an indoor toilet, you know. 
<laughs> okay, Andrew's marriage to Abby Gray after the death of his first wife had soured his relationship with Lizzie and her older sister, Emma. The women already in their 30s considered spinsters by society grew increasingly frustrated and resentful with Lizzie in particular often exhibiting signs of mental instability. Lizzie's actions in the days after the murders also raised eyebrows. She gave contradictory answers to questions and burned a dress that she claimed had been stained while doing housework, which police considered the destruction of evidence. On August 11th, Lizzie was arrested for the murders. <coughs> now, it, it, it already states right there that Lizzie was unstable. Yes. Okay. Uh, but now my question is, they weren't that homely looking. I think her sister was pretty good looking <laughs> for the time. Why were they both still living at home in their thirties? Why not? Why not? Well, I see what you mean. If the father was treating them the way they were treating them, why would you put up with that in the thirties? You would have think that some wealthy young uh aristocrat would have done come and swept at least one of them off their feet yeah i know that's true well actually it says that Liz lizzie was gay she was a lesbian huh yeah it, it, it does we'll get we'll get to that but lizzie was a lesbian lizzie was a lesbian yes that's what they say uh okay she was a carpet eater oh jeez <laughs> <laughs> anyway. well, the lack of forensic evidence played a key role, basically. I mean, they didn't have any back then, you know what I mean? Um, you know, between the dress and the axe and, you know, everything like that, you know, they didn't have the evidence, the, the, the forensics that we have nowadays. Right, you know I mean? they didn't have fingerprint tools and all that stuff. So yeah, they, they didn't have any of that back then. So you'd be able to get away with anything, you know? And they didn't have DNA testing, so... You know, but uh, it says here, despite their belief in Lizzie's guilt, investigators faced an uphill battle in convicting her. There was no physical evidence linking her to the murders. A hatchet has been discovered in the basement. A blade was cleaned, and the handle had been broken off. The police's reluctance to use any sort of forensic testing also hampered the investigation. Fingerprint testing was then in its infancy, and it was never conducted as part of their inquiry, which I don't understand why. They did, however, establish that Lindsay was unsuccessfully attempting to purchase prusic acid, a highly poisonous liquid, in the days before the murder. So that was another thing that she tried to get, acid. And uh, her investigators regarded this as evidence of an earlier attempt to have killed her. There's my There's echo. My echo. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, and then presented at the Do you have more than one set of speakers open? No, no I, I it's, it's it wasn't echoing echo before. Still echoing now? Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, they couldn't they couldn't uh prove anything by the murder weapon, even though they knew it was the murder weapon. Yeah. Okay. You know, if she didn't, uh, well, I don't know if they had a way to tell back then what blood type, you know, a certain blood type was or not. Like, you know, well, we know that uh, Lizzie's blood type was O positive, and that's what we found on the handle. Uh, we know Doesn't that. Make sense, though, if so they could they could they could 
So they, you know, they didn't really have a lot to go on back then. And, you know, they pretty much had to catch a person. Uh, like they would have caught her coming out covered in blood and all that shit, or uh, they would have had to caught her pretty much in the act. Exactly. <coughs> so she invents some guy that comes in and kills them. And, you know, what, what are they going to do? I believe. I, she, I, really, I do. really do. I think she's guilty. I think she done it. One thing, I think she done it for the money. I did, I did too. too. You know what? There was an episode of Ghost Lab where they did an episode on Lizzie Brown and they were there at EVP and they came back and on top of she doing it for the money. I mean, she was the one that was wanting the bigger, finer house and all the finery and all that, you know. I don't think her sister really cared about all that so much. I don't think she did well, but I believe but she. Or at least or they knew. They knew. It says that, that Lizzie Borden struggled later in life despite her newfound notoriety and her neighbors' whispers about her likely guilt. Lizzie remained in Fall River for the rest of her life. She and Emma inherited their father's estate, gaining the financial freedom they had long craved. Lizzie bought a large house on one of the city's most fashionable neighborhoods. <coughs> Excuse me. And spent her time traveling to Boston and New York to indulge in her love of theater. Just five years after the murder, Lizzie was briefly in the headlines again when she was accused of but not tried for shoplifting. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, that would have had to been a thrill thing. Because oh, she no. obviously didn't need to uh, shoplift. No. No. Unless she'd done blown all her fortune, which, you know, was a possibility, but... Well, she didn't have a lavish party. With one of her friends that she That's it. I don't know where... Um, <laughs> In 1905, the sisters became estranged over Lizzie's relationship with actress Nance O'Neill, which Emma alleged, allegedly disapproved of. They rarely spoke in their later years, but died within days of each other. In June 1927, both sisters were buried besides their murdered parents in the family plot in Oak Grove Cemetery. Who is this Nancy O'Neill? I don't think I knew her. Hello, where'd you go? Have we lost you? I'm here. I'm here. Oh, who is this Nancy O'Neill person? It was one of the she was, she was seeing, seeing. having yeah. going yeah. out. Okay, they said there's reverb going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, uh, this is the first first show we've done in a while, and there's probably going to be some boo boos. Hopefully, we'll get that all figured out. No, yeah, I know that goes with me. I don't know how to cut it off. It's me coming. Can you hear me? 
Okay. Anyway. Back to the the charisma that was Lizzie Borden. Lizzie Borden made an appearance on The Simpsons. Now, see, I didn't know this. Oh, yeah. I see. It was awesome. A media sensation in its own day, the Borden murders continued to fascinate the public more than a century after they occurred. Lizzie and her family have been the focus of dozens of books, plays, and films. In 1975, actress Elizabeth Montgomery, star of television's Bewitched, and also a distant relative of Lizzie, portrayed her in a television movie. Famed choreographer Agnes D. Mill created a ballad about the trial. A new opera has been in the works and Lizzie even made a cameo on The Simpsons in which she, along with other notorious figures, such as Benedict Arnold, Richard Nixon, and John Wilkes Booth, served in the jury during a trial over Homer Simpson's soul. Okay. All right, so here's the information. The information that, that I found on that has to do with the father. Um, um, their family was um, um, largely, largely outside, outside socializing. socializing. They were they obsessed with locks, safety, safety. Um, stuff, stuff, stuff like that. that. Control, Control issues with money, money. for presents, other aspects, yeah. small allowances. Abby had paying off the curtains and such. So I guess like they gave them little allowances. Uh, uh, to take the deals together, but I can't remember. I guess they didn't really come together. Um. Odd rejection of odd inconveniences given finances, as you said. They have all this money, but why do they have no odd inconveniences? I guess, I guess they were caught and insane and having family history of fraud remarked upon by many numerous others. I guess a lot of people thought they were insane. Overpaying for household help, given maid's duties. Yeah, they're yeah, overpaying. Father, not especially liked by others. Hard dealing in business, rumors of cheating during undertaker years. <laughs> Made uncomfortable by witness family dynamic. Daughter with kleptomania is indicative of mental problem. So that's why she got caught for shoplifting. Yeah, she has a good <clears throat> she had the kleptomania disease or whatever. Yep. yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Daughter that is permanent and rarely leaves indicative or mental problem. Destruction of pigeons to prevent theft. What? Destruction of pigeons to prevent theft rather than secure premises giving Lock obsession. The father would cut the heads off the pigeons. Was these pigeons right in, right front, in front of? Him. And this is supposed to deter theft. Uh, yeah. I, I, I guess I guess that's what the father was trying to do. <laughs> Display a bedroom key to some unknown purpose. Grudge keeping as demonstrated by Andrew abandoning church. 
father wearing daughter's school ring. Do you think that's where the daughter was wearing the father's school ring? Now that's a little odd. Saving worthless items picked up lot for conceivable value. Scarcity issues fear of penury. Rule bound wearing paint stained dresses. Disposal of urine and slop jar near living area by Andrew. Gossip about family, Abby and Lizzie telling the story of the daylight robbery. She's a mean old thing, etc. Daylight robbery, rob, robbery, robbery, and refusal to pursue it, keeping story close, getting rid of horses and modern convenience of carriage. Bobo's letter from grand family, Just, yeah, yeah. And grand, grand family, addressing parent by first name, Abby. Maid not allowed on second floor. Problems with other extended family members. Hiram Harrington. The house had no bathrooms, electric lighting, nor telephone. Now, all those things were available at the time, were they not? Yes, they were. Now, I can understand... You know, if you're rolling in the dough and you don't want the tax collector coming and taking a lot of your money, I can understand having scant, old, ragged-looking things around your house to make yourself look like you don't have as much as you have. And that's also, I can understand why he didn't want to move out of the smaller house. Yeah, he didn't yeah. want to show what he had. Yeah. This one was so cheap that we had to eat week old for breakfast. Especially on the day of the murders. But being a businessman, I do not understand why he would not have a telephone at his house. Yeah. You know, for important calls while he was at home. Uh, also, just between this is how I see things you have a wife and two daughters that you're making use a freaking outhouse because you're too uh, selfish to put a bathroom in the house I think, I think he did more punishment than he would of anything else but he's punishing too It says here, Lizzie Borden was a lesbian. She never married, but she had uh, many suitors, male or female. Their names were lost in the history. But there was an theater goer, uh, Lizzie Cabin, a teacher by an international youth actress named Amy. And she and was, she and she was and I guess they, they had lots of parties. And, uh, you know, she's spent a lot of time with this lady. Yeah, O'Neill was gay. Yeah. yeah. Lizzie hosted at least three lavish parties for O'Neill and her calves. Sorry about that. All right. All right. Um, I lost where I was. It's all right. Oh, so says she hosted at least three lavish parties for O'Neill at her at her cast. Yeah. And her cast. Yeah. Lizzie's sister Emma disapproved of Lizzie's association with O'Neill and moved out of Lizzie's house shortly after the last of Lizzie's theater cast galas. 
<coughs> obviously, obviously after now back then being gay would not have been a uh and, and outwardly showing that would not have been something you would want to do back then, back then eight, eight, nine, 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 nine. Yeah. you know uh I mean, as far as I know, most of your gay people were still in the closet at that time. Yes. yes. So she's going to throw these big uh, soirees and invite this, this gay actress and all her cast three times a week. And it doesn't say that they performed any kind of acts that would have been construed as, you know, but that doesn't mean that they didn't. You know, I mean, I would have been afraid. Well, obviously, she's not afraid of much of any damn thing. No. But this other person, if I was her, especially with my career, I would have been afraid somebody would see something and stir up a big ruckus, which is bad publicity. <laughs> you know, I mean, I wouldn't. Would. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I'm just thinking, like, you know, what would they have done back then? Yeah. You know, you know they would have made a big stink out of it. I promise you, it'd been all in the papers and everything else, and that poor girl's name would have been drugged through the mud and. She may not ever work in theater again. Anyway. Well, I guess, uh, Lizzie, Lizzie decapitated Abby or Tabby King. Are they safe? Are they safe? And Lizzie uh, was angry at her father. So I guess these, you know, you know the, the anger at her father. Yeah, could have had a lot of that all with her mental, you know. She was angry because her father for reducing her inheritance. Why would he have done that? Punishment? I mean, he would have had to been ticked off at her in a bad kind of way for some reason. Well, it well, seems that the relationship between the Wood and their stepmother, Abby Borden, was close and they treated her as Mrs. Borden and was worried that Abby Borden's family thought to gain access to their father's money. So basically, uh, he uh, reduced her inheritance and, and gave it to his wife. Yes. Yes. Oh, I'd have been ticked off. I'd been lazy. <laughs> yeah, that that is a good reason for wanting to get rid of him and her. Yeah, a lot yeah, of reasons. Re you know, and why would he? Why would she kill her first? Oh, she had oh, hatred. Yeah, yeah, but why would she kill her first? What would be a very good reason? Location. She, she was sent to inherit her money. Yeah, but look, where there was one time of the murders, it just happened to be he got a first or more, more worse than he got, he, got right, he got right to the city. She got to the back of the back of So she was probably falling and she came up behind her and cut off her head and knocked her on the head. Well, I mean, if you think about it, though. <coughs> <clears throat> if she gets rid of Abby first and by some reason she didn't get a chance to kill her father, who's he going to leave that money to? He can't leave it to his dead wife. It would go to the girl. So that would have alleviated that problem. They had, they to, had kill to kill her when he when died. He died. Everything, Everything was her. The relationship between the Borden sisters and their 
stepmother, Abby Borden, was not so close. They greeted her as Mrs. Borden and worried that Abby Borden's family sought to gain access to their father's money. Yeah. yeah. Therefore, they had to get rid of her and break the ties between all that. <coughs> well, it makes the thought that the rhyme the, the rhyme uh, 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 Lizzie Borden took Jack and gave her mother 41. When she when saw she her, she died, he gave her father 41. But, but technically, um, 40 blows to kill Abby Borden and 41 to kill him was not quite quite good. According to the big part that Abby was killed first by 19 blows, not 40. And Abby Borden was through a wound by 10 to 11 blows and finished him off. Gruesome. And they got him on the head and destroyed much of his face. Uh, 10 or 11 blows that finished him off. Yeah. yeah. Were quite gruesome, focused mainly on the head and completely destroyed much of his face. And now we get into my favorite part. Whoa! Ghost! <laughs> Now, given the gory history of the Borden home, it's hardly surprising the building has a haunted reputation. Strange events at the property include the sound of a woman weeping, muffled conversations in empty rooms, and shoes shuffling across the floor. One maid reportedly quit after seeing the indention of a body on a bed by Abby's room. Now, is that supposed to be Abby laying in the bed? Do we could know this? Be. No, we don't know this, but could it have been? Could have been. Could have been anybody. Over 100 years later, 100 years, the Borden house has been turned into the Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast. Many patrons of the inn have reported various accounts of ghostly activity within the house. The most popular room and reportedly the most haunted room is the room in which Abby Borden was hacked to death. I wonder why that would be. It's probably it's angry. angry. I, I can't see no reason why that room would be the most haunted room. Can you? No. no. I don't I see don't it, but, but it's, it's probably, probably like her, her personality, personality her, her anger, anger that allows her to be the most haunted room. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, I mean, she was hacked to death in this room. I guess if, if I was going to hang out somewhere, especially if I was seeking revenge, I'd hang out where I was hacked to death and wait for somebody to show up. I'd be I'd sitting be on the couch. <laughs> right. Okay. People have witnessed a woman in the 19th century clothing making the bed in 19th century clothing, making the bed. Disembodied voices have been heard coming from empty rooms and echoing through the house. Footsteps that belong to no one are also a common experience inside. Perhaps the most spooky reports 
or that of a woman heard crying throughout the home. Yeah. yeah. Now, which woman would you refer to? It would have to be Catherine. Well, now, if I'm not mistaken, by <laughs> this time, uh, Abby and her sister were both dead also. Yeah, they yeah, could be. Could be you know, they could went back to their family home. home. Yeah, yeah. I, I went back. And they could be weeping in the house, you know. Yep. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, or it could be the stepmother. Now it says here, here later kinda, on. Yeah, yeah. I kind of don't see the father weeping through the house. You know what I mean? Just. So it would lie between the three women. Yes. yes. I really don't think he would care. I'm sorry, you were going to say something? Oh, sorry. Uh, I was going to say later in life, Lizzie and Emma inherited a portion of her father's estate, which allowed them to purchase a new home together. The boy and lived together for the following decade. Although Lizzie was guilty by Bieber, and thus Lizzie was accepted in the community following her crime. Her reputation was further turned when she was accused of adopting in 1897. So there she goes, still shoplifting. Now, you got to wonder, though, why would a person who knew that all of her neighbors and everybody thought she was guilty, and I think she was guilty too, but the point is if they, you know, she got acquitted, but all these people thought she was guilty, they shunned her, they didn't want nothing to do with her. <laughs> you know, it would have been a lonely, boring life unless she, uh, brought in like people like this actress woman in her her cast or whatever to have these big parties. Me personally, even if I was innocent, but everybody thought I was guilty, and everybody avoided me or or talked down to me or treated me like I didn't belong there, I would get the hell out. Why? Huh? Why? Why are people like that? I want to enjoy your life. I, okay. would go, I would go somewhere where I could enjoy my life without people being assholes. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, pardon my French, but I mean, I would go somewhere where I could live a peaceful life, you know? Maybe make new friends in, in the neighborhood you're in or something, you know, where people didn't know who the hell you were. Of course, once they found out who you were, they might all run away too, but the whole point is why would you stay there? Why would you go buy a big fancy house in the same damn neighborhood? I wouldn't, stay there? I wouldn't I let people run out of town. Maybe I go buy a big fancy house in some other dead gum state. No, buy that a big fancy log cabin up the mountain somewhere. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I mean, you gotta wonder why would she stay there, knowing that that everybody thought she was guilty, unless she enjoyed the attention. Exactly. exactly. I would. I would. That was. You would. I didn't get, you know, I didn't get arrested. <laughs> I mean, like, I didn't get committed of the crime. I didn't, I didn't do, anything. do anything. What to what try? Okay, in 1995, Emma Borden abruptly okay. moved out of the house that she had shared with her sister. The two never spoke again. Emma may have been un comfortable with Lizzie's close friendship with another woman, Nance O'Neill, 
although her silence on the issue was fueled speculation that she had learned new details about the murders of her father and stepmother. No, re, no member of the household staff ever offered additional information on the rift, even following Lizzie's death. So maybe this, uh, her sister found out something that she didn't know prior to all this and realized that, hey, her sister's a freaking murderer. Killed her mom and dad, you know? Yep, yep. Her stepmom and dad. Now, it said that they both pretty much didn't like Abby, so I don't see why she would got all upset about that. But now maybe she was the closer one to her father. True. True. I don't know. I mean, see, that whole that gum thing is just weird. I don't care what you say. You can't tell me that, that Emma didn't have a clue. You know, that she didn't think in the back of her head somewhere that her sister actually did that. She had a she part. Had. She knew she something. Knew. She knew something. I mean, it's just, uh, this whole story just is, is just weird. I think it's correct. <laughs> I always I said, said up when I wanted to break back from that bed. But she died. She, in a she lived she off the life. And Lizzie Borden died of pneumonia in Fall River, Massachusetts on June 1st, 1927. Emma Borden died days later in. New Market, New Hampshire. Yeah. Yep. Lizzie Borden's lawyer's house, Haverhill, Massachusetts, yep. the yep. house belonging to Lizzie Borden's lawyer during the time of the murders of Mr. and Mrs. Borden in 1990. It was 05. In 1995, a family bought the house and moved in unaware that it was haunted. That's my favorite kind of house. Yeah. Yeah. Doors would mysteriously open and close. There were odd noises, and the family dog barked at a door that the family had never opened. A month later, the family moved out. I would I love to live in that house, even though it's a house. <laughs> you know, I could see the boarding house being haunted, but why would the Lizzie's lawyer's house be haunted? Good question. Good question. Unless he'd done some dirty deeds that uh, he was having to pay for. Now, they no, actually yeah. discovered yeah. some of the attorney's handwritten journal providing a fresh insight into the relationship with her father. father. I guess uh, there was about 100 pages. One contained various newspaper clippings. And Dex to letter and number of the system. The second can be a personal note that is assembled from interviews he conducted. And some of the individuals interviewed with people mentioned in the clippings. So I like to read those uh, journals. So the journal. Jenny's notes in his journal show he interviewed people who knew the Gordon family intimately and were familiar with Andrew Borden's relationship with his daughters. Lizzie Borden cared for her father very deeply. That's why she had to space up. There was a tremendous outpouring of grief in the letters and that's a new side to the story. Because the journals are so fragile, they have been unable to read them in their entirety, but 
He said it's unlikely they include a smoking gun that would prove Lizzie Borden killed her father and stepmother. Yeah. Yeah. Which sucks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when it gets right down to it, I think she did it. I think she wanted the money. I think she wanted a better, fancier, richer life. Yeah, I. I, I, I and she wasn't going to get it because apparently he was ebbing away at her uh, dowry and giving it to his, his new wife. So, and she was worried, they were worried about the stepmother's family coming in trying to get a hold of the money. Well, they couldn't kill the whole family, but if they got rid of her, that would cut the ties. Oh, absolutely. They had to they had get rid of her. So that's why I still say that's why she killed her first. Because even if she couldn't have got to her father, the ties would have been cut. And uh, her family couldn't come after the money, neither could she. Angela in the chat said the blood was found under the couch. So that could have turned. Yeah. Ouija board was found underneath the couch. Also, so that uh, can stir up, stir up activity. Are you saying that the, a Ouija board was found underneath the couch at the Borden residence? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think, it, I think like Bill, Bill said, said yeah, it was yeah, the was Ghost Adventures. Adventures. And I remember this was an episode. And I do believe we did find the Ouija board. But that could have been anybody putting it there. Anyway, um, now I could see some uh, ghost hunters or whatever you want to call them, you know, that visited the place, placing one under there out of sight. And, of course, you know, when you use a Ouija board, you're supposed to close the board before you leave. They could have left that open for, you know, things to come through. Yeah, they yeah, could have. Make the place more active, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but a lot of people stay there, and a lot of people from what tell me that there wasn't much activity when they stayed there. It's like $1,500 a night, or maybe a little more. Uh, um, to, to rent out the, it, it, you know, no one's house for the night, night the best of the But a lot of so people tell me, oh, I stayed there, there and nothing happened. happened. Yeah, yeah, and yeah um, I agree. They like to hang people back in the day. Which was, I guess, the, uh, most uh, regularly used form of execution except the firing squad back then. I think I back then was the perfect time to get away with murder. Well, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna talk on this subject a little longer, about long word. <laughs> I can't even talk tonight. Blah, 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 blah. Um, we don't have any more information on hand than what, what we gave you, but um, 
if anybody in the chat has a question about a certain part of this story or knows anything different, because I said it before, I'll say it again. There's more than one story about what actually happened. You know, like I said, in the, in the one story, you know, uh, Lizzie claimed that somebody broke in the house or somebody came in the house and killed them. And she came in and found them, basically. I think something like that. Yeah, that's yeah. where the story goes, that someone came in and killed him and her, and they found them. Because she claimed it was outside the Washington windows. And then the MR were, were out back. back. They were out back. back. And say, so you could turn this around and say, well, if somebody did, and she was innocent, but she, somebody, she had somebody come in and do the job. She's still just as guilty. But she could have told somebody, hey, look, you know, if you knock them off, I stand to, you know, gain a big inheritance, you know, and I'll pay you X amount of dollars. She could have had a hit You know, wasn't unheard of back then. Yeah, of yeah, course. Of course. So, you know, that's another way you can look at the whole thing. You know, maybe there could have been, you know, some, some man came in and killed him. I believe she did it herself. But I think she did it. I really do. I did and the, the only thing about it, and they even found evidence, if I remember correctly, um, She burnt the dress. She's trying to buy ass. Because she claimed it had a stain on it. The paint on it. It did have a stain on it. It was, it was red, red ink. ink. It was <laughs> red ink. Yeah, it was red ink. All right. <coughs> um, the axe handle, of course, being broke, and the axe was down there. They found it cleaned off. The sink that she washed off, washed up in, I think, had blood stains in it. Of course, the problem being there was they didn't have any way to test that stuff. Exactly. You know, so, I mean, it could have been anybody's blood in the sink. Or it could have been, as she put it, red ink. Well, I got red ink on my dress and I had it on my hands. I had to wash my hands and... But that's to give you a reason to burn the dress. So we're washing red ink off our hands and we're 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 burning a dress because it's got red ink on it. In the same area where we have a bloody axe, you know. Now, am I to think that this is uh there's red ink on the axe also? Well they found well, they the found them, uh cleaned, uh, cleaned up. up. Oh, they found it cleaned up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But how can how you can not murder him and her? I mean, the you, way know what they, you know what they needed, don't you? What? Is uh, that stuff that you spray on stuff and you hold the blue light over it and or the black light and it shows up blood? Yeah, you, yeah, you, 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 you go into go that house and do that. I, I bet you'll find the whole thing. If they went in there with the with the right forensic tools today, and and they, uh, I'm sure the axe is in a museum somewhere by now. But, but, yeah, uh, yeah. allow you to do that. You know why couldn't they? Test that axe handle for fingerprints now. Maybe they don't want to get out. Do you believe that the people that own the house is making money off of her murder? Yeah. Do you think that's right? No. 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 But then again, look at all the other places that do the same thing. So wouldn't it be up to those owners to allow them to come in and do that? You know, look at the Villisca axe murder house. Yeah, yeah. Villisca. 
you know, four children were murdered, you know, two adults and four children were murdered. They're making money off of that. Yeah, they yeah. are. Uh, look at how many souls died in Waverly Hills. They're making money off of that. I, I just thought, you know. So, you know, you, yeah, it's morbid, it's gruesome, and in in my opinion, it's wrong. But these people realize that <clears throat> owning a piece of haunted property is worth a lot of money nowadays because the paranormal is all out in the open where it used to be all kept secret and hush hush. Just like Bill like said, that, yeah, better keep better it in history for the money. You know, and you don't just have your 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 paranormal teams that are out doing their thing. You have all the thrill seekers that want to see a ghost or they want to hear a voice or, you know, uh, whatever. You know, and when people go to the Lizzie Borden house, and I would be guilty, I'll tell you up front, I'd be guilty. Uh, <laughs> they're going to want to go up to the room where, uh, and that'd be the room I'd want to stay in right there. Where the stepmother was murdered at. I'd want, that'd be my room for the night. Because it's the most haunted in the house or because of her? Huh? Because it's most haunted or because it's Abby? Well, I figure if the house is haunted, it's going to be haunted by her because she was brutally murdered. What about Andy? It's going to be haunted by him downstairs, probably, because he was brutally murdered downstairs. You don't hear too much about that. You know, so, yeah, uh, if I was going to stay the weekend there, I'd want to stay upstairs in her room one night, and I'd want to stay downstairs in the area where he was murdered at for one night. I want to do Evie. Huh? I want to do Evie in that house. Well, Yeah. But anyway, we're, we're kind of, we're getting a little offbeat, but, you know, now when you think about it, what two spirits would you expect to be in that house, his and hers? Yeah. yeah. No, no. That's not saying that there can't be any more. No, of course. I'm a firm believer that spirits travel. And, um, you know, they could be X amount of spirits passing through that place every day. Yeah. I'm not, not, not associated with the case. So, but the main characters that are going to be there, or I would think would be there all the time, would be Andy and Eddie. And also, I might expect to see uh, Lizzie and Emma there. Oh, absolutely. You know. Uh, if I had the money, I'd go stay in that house for a night. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's expensive. I know. But I'd like to do it just so I can say I did. Exactly. <laughs> Now, my team is going to Octagon Hall, which is up in Franklin, Kentucky. That's supposed to be a pretty active place. I think we know that. Um, guess we'll see how that turns out. We're supposed to go on the 31st. Of course, I'll, I'll let everybody know how that comes out. Pretty sure there'll be a webisode up on YouTube. Might no, be a no. little bit afterwards, but we're gonna have the show come to an end. Um, Paranormal Graveyard we have on March twenty eighth. The superstitions. Uh, I don't know the list that I've got has. Uh, hmm. 
That's what we have on March 28th. With the the one that I have at, at the top of my list is coincidences. Oh, okay. okay. Well, we'll figure out which one you want to do. Actually, the one I want I want the one I want to talk about first, of course. Um, actually, I'm kind of um, stuck between the two. Um, <laughs> and I'm not seeing the other one right now. Where is it? I have to go make sure I still have that one. Um, Gettysburg Ghost, of course, is, is oh, the uh, Gettysburg Ghost. And then there was another one, something about ghosts or something. And I don't see it now in my oh, list. Oh, here ghost story. Huh? Yeah, 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 it's at the bottom of the list. There it is. Okay. I, I'm kind of torn between them two. <laughs> Okay. You know, because Gettysburg, man, that's, that place that's is off the charts. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, we'll figure out what I want to do, and we'll, uh, we'll discuss that after. Um, I mean, I, I've still got a couple of weeks to make up my mind, so. <laughs> yeah, I'll, absolutely. I'll, I'll be sure, to, you know, which one I go with, and then I'll, I'll uh, if you want to whip up some, uh, Ad covers for me, that'd be awesome. And uh, I'll get some event stuff up and we'll let all, all our uh, wonderful fans out there know which yeah. one we're doing. And uh, of course, it's going to be the same time, you guys. So uh, mark that down your little calendar book. It'll be uh, 8 Eastern, 7 Central. Mary wants me to one of old smells. That our family traditions passed yeah, down. I think that's a great one there. I have to I'll definitely have to look into that. Uh, well, anyway, uh, um, you watch me on the Rave Radio. Roger, actually, actually, we should do one on ancient witchcraft. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, I think that would be really cool. And, you know, of course, things they've done way, way back in the day, they're still practiced today, but they're, they've been altered and modified and you know, I mean, getting down to the real nitty gritty, what they did back then. I think that'd be pretty cool. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll say good night, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Good night, everybody. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed our comeback show. It's been a while. And I don't guess you could tell either one of us was slightly nervous, but <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're back. Good topic here. and and a lot of good information in there. I still think she's guilty, even if she didn't do it hands on. She had it done and she paid somebody, so she's still just as guilty. Yeah, either way, yeah. either way, she's guilty. And she wouldn't have had to, unless she was standing there watching somebody else do it, she wouldn't have had to burn her dress. So, yeah, I think she done it. <laughs> Good night, everybody. We'll see y'all on the 28th. Uh, Good night, everybody.